Okay, so I want to take a couple of minutes to actually go over uh, this is long overdue. I want to go into Biomed Explorer. Uh, last time I checked, I believe it was yesterday, and uh, I, I was looking on YouTube, checking if there are any videos on Biomed Explorer. As far as I saw, this is uh, actually going under the radar, and that's that's not good, because this, in my view, is a big step towards what we, uh, not only uh, towards one of my goals when it comes to natural language processing and transformer models, I'm not actually really sure if... Um, if the Biomed Explorer is based on a transformer model, but I think it is. Uh, but this is a very important step in getting factual data out of language models. So I know a lot of people in the field are actually trying to work with different pre-trained transformers to uh, prompt them or to nudge them or to train them into getting a lot of, uh, into getting factual hard science data out of them. Um, but of course, Google stands at the top of these and probably at the top of everyone because it's got a lot of computation power, it's got a lot of money. And of course, it's got some of the best researchers and access to a lot of scientific data. Now in this case, uh, Biomed Explorer is actually a different way into looking into published studies. And from what I've learned, this has started with the COVID data set. So this Biomed Explorer started with uh, one of its purposes was to actually help with furthering COVID research. But in this case, We've seen that it's been expanded and there was a, let me actually see, Biomed Explorer, there was a frequently asked question, I believe. And there was a blog post release. So Biomed Explorer, Google. There was a blog post release, so Google AI blog. I think this is the one. No, this is 2020. So if we go to Google AI blog, we look over, it was last month in May. Let's see, June 4. three May 24 where is it May 18 There's a lot of good stuff here on the Google AI blog, so you might want to check it out. May 10. Jesus. Felix, May 5. May 3rd, way too much stuff in here. What if we search for Biomed Explorer?
and shoot for past year. Research stash. That's not from Google. Maybe it was here. Yes, so this is it. Update 2021. So if you want to better understand what this is based on, uh, you should actually read this blog from uh, May 4th, but actually updated. So May 4th, 2020, but actually updated on May 20, 2021. So we are expanding the Research Explorer to include all PubMed publications. That's a corpus of 31 million scientific papers as well as content from PubMed Central. So there's a lot of stuff in here. There's a lot of stuff that you can do on Biomed Explorer. So where were we? We have the frequently asked questions here. We are encouraging users to post questions to the tool for better results. So the tool is geared towards scientists and researchers and designed to answer complex biomedical questions. This is very, very freaking exciting because, I mean, I've been looking for this for months. What are the methods to distinguish between different SARS-CoV-2 genotypes? A good question will contain sufficient context and be worded in such a way that the ideal answer is something that would appear in a text of a scholarly paper. So, for example, a question with a yes or no answer may not be the best thing to ask because the kind of text generally does not appear in scholarly papers. So, it actually teaches you how to ask questions because you're going through, this is semantic search, you're going through millions of papers. And this is the kicker. This is the very interesting feature. Follow-up questions. After receiving your initial search results, you can ask a follow-up question by clicking on the plus sign. We'll actually look into this. Follow-up questions give you the opportunity to dive deeper on your initial query. The follow-up questions search for answers within the papers you originally retrieved. So this is actually a search within your search and you can currently ask three follow-up questions and more uh, frequently asked questions here why I'm getting blank answers what papers are searched so 31 million papers to be honest I think I've actually used this tool a couple of days ago and it gave me results as f as recent as uh, third as 2021 how is this tool different from a search engine so, existing search engines use traditional approaches such as keywords and ranking algorithms. You will find relevant results, but you may have to sift through a lot of noise. The Biomed Explorer applies semantic understanding. So this is what I've, I said, it's semantic search. Similar to what the folks at um, Semantic Scholar are doing. And I'm going to actually do a review on Semantic Scholar uh, in the next couple of days. So, semantic understanding of the content of the papers to pull out answers and highlight snippets and evidence for the user. In other words, the tool will try to highlight passages that actually answer your questions. Not just return snippets that match on keywords which can be hit or miss. We also added unique functionality to allow users to ask follow-up questions. How does the tool work? So they use a combination of keyword and deep retrieval to build an index. Leverages state-of-the-art QA models to allow for focused answers. This blog post that I've actually looked for, so it's the same. So you might want to actually uh, read this to understand how um, it works and if there is interest I might go through this in a future video but now this biomed is a newer version of the COVID research explorer we released in May we are now updating the tool to expand so I've, we've seen 
uh, this is this has been triggered by their work on the COVID Research Explorer. So let's actually see it in action. You can ask a question, for example, like what regulates the Warburg effect? And they actually tell you here what, what's a good question. What are the immunological markers? So this is for someone who's really interested in biomedical research. This is ah, extremely exciting. Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. So what's one question we can ask? This, uh, these are recent searches. So let's actually, I don't know. Let's actually start with how Let's actually say what are some genomic what are some polymorphisms is it with the y what are some polymorphisms what are polymorphisms affecting the TCA cycle? Or we should say the citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle. So what are polymorphisms affecting the TCA cycle? What are polymorphisms associated with the TCA cycle? So Polymorphisms in genes of TCA cycle key enzymes are associated with early recurrence. So this actually answers sort of like impaired mitochondrial metabolism, inflammation. We could ask a follow-up question. What are, poly what are polymorphisms affecting the TCA cycle? let's say related to energy metabolism or diabetes something like that new follow-up question what are so we have the initial question what are polymorphisms affecting the tca cycle let's let's see what happens how many polymorphisms how many of these, how many polymorphisms, let's see if it understands, how many polymorphisms have been associated with the development of type 2 diabetes? So this is follow-up question number one no follow-up answer interesting can we reformulate it let's say how many of them what if we say how many of them have been associated with the development of type 2 diabetes how many of them are related to diabetes no answer how many maybe there are none what are the SNPs related to diabetes What are polymorphisms affecting the TCA cycle? Let's try to be more broad here. What are the SNPs? Uh, let's say, what is the connection with diabetes? 
trying to be more broad here diabetes we've got an answer there no answer here so no answer uh, so let's go back what is the connection with diabetes let's just say diabetes diabetes maybe we do a keyword search because I've seen diabetes somewhere over here gene variant of Fox risk of type 2 diabetes we genotype three SNPs the TCC repeat polymorphism this is thymine so we have adenine, guanosine, thymine, cytosine cytosine and thymine but this is um, this is not TCA this is TCC I've said the TCA cycle what if I say the Krebs and then do a diabetes follow-up let's say SNPs associated with diabetes so as we've seen in the guideline it says that they highlight potential answers abnormalities so the cellular fate of glucose and its relevance in type 2 diabetes abnormalities in each pathway may occur however it is unclear whether perturbations in these lead or are a consequence of the multiple metabolic abnormalities in uh, the disease all right so now i get it it says no follow-up answer in this specific document but you may have follow-up answer in other documents so our uh, initial uh, query so my initial question was follow-up question how many SMPs how many polymorphisms are associated with diabetes and then we click on done and then we may have follow-up answers so that's why they they divided them in columns and it says no follow-up answer found in this document but you have in this case for this specific answer to my first question to my initial question there is an answer to my follow-up question and of course we have 100 results and I can add more follow-up questions so rebalancing cellular energy substrate metabolism to mend the failing heart this might not actually answer or it might I haven't actually looked into the paper uh, it might not an answer my initial question but in this case we can see that they highlight something with respect to the follow-up question so the specific alterations in substrate preference toward either glucose or fatty acid you may be a suitable target for intervention uh, maybe not because it doesn't say anything about polymorphisms I could simply just say what are genetic mutations instead of polymorphisms because that's probably more used there was an unexpected error
and I could say how many mutations are associated with type 2 diabetes we might see something here so we have the re the initial results are um, sorted by relevance but we can also sort them by publication date and this is something from this month so this is as recent as June 2021 it's amazing what Google can do all right so this is probably um, this has uh, been more than I wanted to go for so 20 minutes looking into the Biomed Explorer but I'm really excited because this provides a very powerful tool for researchers especially when it comes to the biomedical field and maybe in the future they might add um, papers from archive which uh, would actually include different scientific fields such as physics, mathematics, computer science not only uh, biomedical and maybe they would call them scientific explorer or something like that but anyways this is it for this video